Hey there, GT fans, have we got a treat for you. Although it's 20 some degrees here in Maryland, we were invited over by Mike Levitas and the crew at TPC Racing to give you an exclusive preview of the new GT3 Cup. Um, like many, you've probably seen that amazing photo of 20 some GT3 Cups that have recently been delivered, but I haven't seen it in person. And today we'll go inside and show you the difference between the 2021 and its predecessor. So come along. All right, so again, thank you to Mike and his crew for allowing us to be here. They are in crunch mode right now. They're getting ready to set the car up, get it loaded up and head down to Sebring for next week. So um, it's gonna be a little bit different than our normal video with Mike because we won't have his complete undivided attention and him to be able to walk us through, but we know a little bit about the car and we're gonna share it with you. And probably the first thing is, Damon, if you can pan over, just take a look at how wide the new 992 GT3 cup is. It is based on the turbo body, um, but if I'm not mistaken, if you measure from wheel to wheel compared to the 991 cup car, it's only, might, the, the, the width difference of this car and the 991 measured out is what, like half an inch or something? It's uh, actually, it's, it's about half inch a side, maybe even, maybe even a little more. It could be like 15 millimeter more okay. a side. But the presence, I, mean, I think he'll agree with me, the presence of how wide this car looks is pretty amazing. Um, talking about looks, you know, myself and, and a few of my, my friends have noticed that the GT3 cup here is delivered in metallic silver when previous GT3s Cup cars have always been white. You know, back to the 1990s when the 964 Cup car was produced, it's always been white. Why is it now silver? I don't know. I'm not sure Mike knows. So if any of you out there knows why they're being delivered in silver now, it'd be kind of cool to find out and be a little piece of trivia that us uh, GT fans will know. Um, but speaking of the, the 964 Cup car, you know, back in 1990, they also produced a small batch of 964 Cup cars to be raced here in the US, right? but that never came to fruition. And unfortunately- And you know, those were white, I think. They were, and, right? and you know, we've waited until now, decades later, we've got a cup car program that's gonna be running in 2021. Pretty exciting. You know, I've got an idea that why I think it's silver, but I would rather we hear from other people just to find out why, because I definitely <laughs> do not know for sure. I don't know why either, right. but we no know. Idea. We, we couldn't help it because of that, that, that amazing delivery picture right. You just saw them all lined up. Like, Wait a minute, they're not white. But anyways, so while we're talking about body, let's let's talk about this this fender here and how it's significantly different from previous generation cup cars. And if we were to take a magnet to this, it wouldn't work. You're a hundred percent right, Vu. As so, to a matter of fact, we will take a magnet. And uh, this has always been a from the from all of the cup cars we've had and our experience with the cars. This panel has always been a steel panel. And as well, the rocker panel has been a steel panel, but now it's all aluminum. And you said that's because of the new chassis design where the rear subsection is attached differently than previous generation uh, street cars and cup cars. Uh, it, it, that's true. I mean, I'm making an observation based on looking at both cars and taking the cars apart. Mm -hmm. We've had enough time. We've had this car for a day or two. so all of the underpinnings and underpans we've had off of the car and it's very obvious how they did it because my concern right away was without a, a boron steel rocker where is the side protection in the chassis knowing that this is a street car tub with a cage in it and they turn it into a race car so what they've done is they've linked the front and the rear sub assemblies these are like big castings that are both riveted and bonded into the tub and they've connected it with a honeycombed aluminum substructure. So now it's like, basically it's like a tube chassis race car. It's pretty, and it's, it's gotta be way more rigid, way stiffer car. So the aluminum skin now I think is, is more aerodynamic design <laughs> than, it is, than it is structural. I don't believe that it has a lot of structural uh, integrity into the car. 
So what's interesting with cup cars is typically they're using an engine that's very similar to the street version. I think it's no different in this case. This car produces, I believe, 500, 510 horsepower. I the street think. car is kind of the same. Same. So really the performance out of a cup car is going to be chassis, suspension, brakes, you know, lightening of the interior, so on and so forth. But you still believe like the difference between this cup car and its previous generation will be a wider gap than the, the previous two generation of cup cars. Oh, totally. I believe this car is such a tremendous departure in the chassis side that I would equate this to the difference of a 997 to a 993 oh, wow. in its chassis. So this is a huge evolutionary jump from the 991. Because in, in, a, in a lot of ways, when our 996 came out, the water-cooled car, the rear suspension wasn't that dissimilar than the rear suspension on the last, last 993. But the tub was way better, and the car had different wheelbase, had different track width, and it just was an overall faster sports car. But this car is a mega leap over the, over the last 991. From every indication, everything we've seen, it's huge, huge. So I can't help it if on a Damon you can see this, but I'm tripping over some huge wheels and tires here. And uh, probably the biggest difference is this is the rear one, which probably isn't that much different from previous generation, but the front wheel, that's where it's at, right? Well, the real, the, the actual, this wheel right here, the front wheel is basically the rear wheel off of our Gen 2991. It's a 12 inch wheel. That's insane, folks. Look at insane. this, this is a... <laughs> It's like front a, wheel. <laughs> this is, and this is like a intermediate type of rain. They use this for transport only. It even has a little, you know, stamping on it. Yeah. So this isn't even completely representative of the tire, but it's a 300 tire. So it's a massive front tire. I mean, do look at it, think of this. I mean, one of my favorite of the last generation 997 cars my rear tire was a 285, so this is a 3 <laughs> on the front of this car. That's crazy. And I think most of us that are watching this video know that the suspension setup has changed dramatically for the GT3. And I'm thinking part of that change in setup allows for a wider tire? Yeah. I mean, you know what it's coming down to is this. We were really challenged on the 991 Gen 2 and Gen 1 with the current front tire based on the McPherson strut being overloaded. That's what the issue was. Now with this new designed front suspension, having a A-arm upper and a lower control arm, and I can give you some light in here. Shed a little bit of this. You can kind of get a sight in here, Vu. But the lower control arm adjusts, allows for adjustability of camber. The upper control arm is an A-arm. So what this allows us to have is the ball joint has been moved as close to the brake surface as possible, allow for as long of an arm as possible. And as well as having adjustability, the strut or the shock no, no longer carries the load. The arms are carrying the load into the chassis and the chassis transmits it from the, this right front can get transmitted instantly to the left rear. They're tied together. Now you mentioned this, this, you know, this setup here is new for the GT3 Cup, but it is not new to Porsche Motorsport. No, this I've, I've kind of kept. Well, I always keep an eye on what's going on in the racing, being at the track most every pro weekend, and it started on the RSR, like the WEC car. I saw this front suspension many years ago. When the 997s were running, we saw something like this. And then, of course, this has been on the GTD car. And it's been on the, um, you know, GTLM has had this for, you know, since the beginning. So this is just an evolution of the, of the 911 GT3 well, I mean, that's, family. That's what Porsche does best, right? They take the technology, they work on it at kind of top, top level program, they fine tune it, and then it finds its way, way down, down, downstream. And then hopefully one day, 
Um, on, in this case, it does get in, uh, transmitted into in, the GT3 street, streetcar. It is. I mean, the bottom line is what you're seeing now for technology here is going to be in the dealer's showroom. I mean, this is it exactly. This is all of the production parts. A cup car ends up being the production uh, phase of it. Now, so, I couldn't help but notice, because every other cup car we've looked at with you, different brand caliper on this car. Um, for whatever reason, maybe for manufacturing purposes, or but I do notice this this clip here that reminds me of my '87 911 brakes. That you can just pop these off and make a quick pad swap. It is. I'm not a hundred percent, but I'm pretty sure that this is the endurance caliper set um, that they're using in the cup, and um, it's a nice rigid, uh, you know, caliper, and it allows for. A quick pad change. You can see the pads are 25, 26 millimeter pads. Check out the width of them. You yeah, know, that's they're, they're so, pretty beefy. <laughs> right. Well, that's what you use in endurance. That's what we always use in the 24 hours. We'd go through two of those. You, you try to get one and go past uh, the, the mid park, and that way you knew you only had one pad change. So that's the uh, the caliper is a nice rigid caliper. So so since we have the camera kind of pointed at the alignment uh, tool there. Talk about setup for this new 992 cup car versus previous generations, like setting up a cup car today. Obviously, you've, you've gone to the Porsche Motorsports training. You have you know pretty sophisticated tools. Is this car going to be purely you know specialist can tune and, and kind of the normal mechanic will, will never be able to get this car right? Well, I don't know that it's per se that exactly, Vu, but to me, the GT3 car, since we've been racing them, the GT3 family of car has really been a professional sports car designed for tuning the chassis by a proper engineer that has track experience. Mm -hmm. And this car stays true to that formula. This is Porsche's, you know, uh, race car. And yes, it, it, it does take specialized skill to know, you know, whether to change the camber or the length of the upper arm versus the lower arm. Do you move the arms together to get more track width? One thing that I'll tell you is that the track width of the front end of this car is wider than the rear. Oh, is that right? Yes, it is. Oh. And that's been growing over the years and generations. And our 996 that we won the 24 hours in, actually we did that. We had a wider front track width than a rear track width. And uh, it works in the sports car. And uh, for a number of reasons, but uh, the, th the big improvement over this car again is that front chassis is is pretty magnificent piece. And uh, yeah, it really does take a specialized skill to set it up um, for sure. The rear suspension is very similar to the 991 Gen 2. It really is. There's improvements, but Porsche, Porsche always keeps what works. And this design was stellar. And uh, it's, this, is the this is a much improved even you know, 991 rear suspension. So you, you had mentioned that you've done some measurements on the shocks and springs. Have you found anything different between this car and previous cars? Cup cars? We have, we, the first thing that we did on this particular car, on the other side of the car, you can see the measurement numbers, but we dynoed the shocks and we dynoed the springs so that when we're at the track, we've got a good indication of the setup changes, what they will be driving the car. The biggest change in this car is it features a Multimatic shock and there's very little hysteresis. So in other words, the fluid flow over the piston is pretty instantaneous when the piston ends a travel and starts a travel, which is very important that it doesn't have a dead area. And it has a very nice low speed control over in the front end over the compression and the rear end, it has a really nice low speed control over the rebound, which from me with the wider front end, means the biggest advantage this car will have over the 991 is the carry speed to the corner. This car is probably going to be worth two to three more miles an hour on the entry to the corner. And consequently, it could be worth as much as five on the exit, which that is where you, the magic is on a race car. Almost any sports car, the magic is the entry and exit speed. And this car will exude that in spades. 
So tell us a little bit about the, the new wing that's on the back of it. Well, I think that that goes right along with the suspension changes, allowing for more entry speed. The wing is the Swan Next wing, which allows for really complete aerodynamic use of the wing itself. So this car will have more downforce than a uh, 991 or the outgoing 991. And that's an exact carryover from the RSR. It is. That's a carryover from the RSR. It's a carryover now from the GTD program, uh, carryover from the GT4 program. The big thing also, the aid to the wing is the rear deck lid. Look how much it's like the, the, the ducktail from the early 911s. Absolutely. And what that does is it, it actually, rather than having the air spill down this direction or pull away the laminar flow from the bottom of the wing, this actually helps increase the laminar flow of the bottom of the wing so the root, the total root of the wing is fully used for downforce. And uh, so this car has a lot of, pur lot of purpose. Since we're at the back of the car, you know, is there much that you're going to need to learn about this motor or is this motor pretty much a carryover from previous generation? It's very similar. This is a uh, Porsche's great about that. They always take what's good. They don't reinvent what works and what's good. And this engine is really a carryover from the Gen 2 car. It does have some improvements that we've seen in the oiling system. It looks like it's improved yet. The oil, if you want to call it the lower uh, casting that the oil pump sits in is a little deeper and a little bigger. So the pump could be even larger than the last pump. And the last pump is massive. I don't know if you've ever, oh, you can't see it. The, we got the under trays back on it. That's a shame. But okay. the engine, for the most part, you can say it's a carryover. Even the induction system is right off of the uh, Gen 2 991. But you are right about the bodywork. Look at how, look at how the, uh, the rear tail light, it really makes the visual, it ties it together. Also, look at the exit. Look at the exit of the high pressure that would normally be behind the wheel, the pumping, the pumping of the wheel. Look at how that's yeah. improved from the 991. Maybe you'll, me, uh, Mike, maybe take us through sort of the arrow here, intake and, and out the back. I think you just said it, Bill. That was it. You've got the air coming in, which is some cooling. Get some uh, the hot air that's produced by the braking and the wheel itself. And then the wheel spinning, you know, the wheel is turning and the wheel is like a, is a pump. It, it creates high pressure. So you've got, a, you got pressure coming in and then you got a super low pressure behind it. This is a low pressure area. So it, it tries to evacuate. So really what this is mostly used for is there's so much low pressure behind this bumper cover that the fresh air comes in here and it goes right through and it's extracted. Look at the size of this opening. I mean, that is, that is completely hollowed out for maximum you know, area to, to exit the air. I think you're gonna see the same aero uh, effects on the street car. The road car is gonna be Telling everybody now, if you're, yeah. <laughs> be, be careful of the new GT3. It's yeah. going to be quite the automobile. Yeah, it's it's amazing how Porsche is able to just always continue to step it up, and uh, step it up in big ways. Where you know the this, to, to you know for for recording sake, I mean we're talking about how amazing this car is, but probably in a couple of years we'll be talking about the next generation and how this car is you know almost a dinosaur. I don't, <laughs> you know, Vu. I, I don't, know, don't how, know. I don't know how they do it. I don't know at this point. I mean, this is really connecting all the dots that where they were going. I mean, I'm sure they've got some more tricks up their sleeve, but this is really- but a, how long can it go for, right? I gosh, mean, yeah. but well, this is a massive jump. Let's take a look at your office, so to speak, here on the yeah. inside and Step how right that has in. changed. Why don't you walk Damon through what's changed in here? Well, I think you're, the biggest thing you'll see right away is the dash carryover from the road cars in that they have that huge display and the same, we have a much larger display. The steering wheel has also been changed over from the, it actually from the GT2 car. The seat is a carryover from the last generation. Really nice safe, you know, seat helps in side impact if we, it was to go that far. It's a kind of the new safety regulation. Super huge compartment area, Vil. It keeps growing on the inside. Makes the car safer and safer. 
Look at the attention to detail even in the door. The other one used to be, you know, this has really come a long way. Got a push button for You can see we've got weight on the seat right now because we're in the middle of setup. So we've got driver's weight here right now. There. Right now we've got driver's weight simulating the driver. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the cockpit yet is even bigger than the 991. Don't know how they do it, but they did it. And uh, it, or it's, it sure has that illusion of being it. And that makes it even a larger crumple area, you know, for impact. And, uh, you know, same safety protection as the 991 could even be a little more. They keep improving safety. Safety is always the uh, issue in the road car and the race car. Well, let's take a look at up front. Anything up here? noteworthy surprised you when you saw it well a lot of this has changed you know look at some of the aero effects even the air coming in now the the you know the the air coming through the front cooler now goes through the hood you're gonna see this coming on the gt3 the escape air or the exit air the exhaust air from the center radiator is now in the very front of the nose give you the most amount of downforce you know, put pressure in front of the front axle. Where it can have the most leverage. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, imagine the center line of the front axle mm -hmm. where this is. And uh, it really makes use of aero. And then, of course, the center duct here is for, that's for cockpit. Oh, is that for cockpit? That's okay. cockpit. That's your uh, cockpit air. That's cockpit air. Doesn't have air conditioning yet. Well, when they come out with the Club Sport version. <laughs> the Club Sport versions do. Why the cup cars do, I don't, I cannot answer you. They, they want you to work a little bit harder. <laughs> uh, it's, they've definitely always worked me hard, but, you know, but so the arrow is improved in the front nose. It looks like the front tub is kind of the same, but again, you know, seems to be a little more reinforced. I'm sure a lot of it's due. You can see that this is the, the frame itself of the car, like the last one. But the lower frame now is much beefier in here, so it seems, and the casting, look at how they're connected where they went. This aluminum casting that ties together the lower casting, which is on the, uh, the 991. And now the way it's attached here allows for the pickup point for the lower control arm. So now the lower control arm really has a, a proper frame that's attached to. So this chassis had to be redesigned for this front suspension. For sure. Even, lo even look at the magnesium pickups. I was about to say, yeah. Look yeah, that. yeah. Attention to detail like there. Porsche is well known for that. And as you scan yeah. across, you can't help but notice those cool little sweatbands around yeah. the reservoirs. They've now. had they've had that on the 991. Yeah. That's kind of a carryover. And that's the dual master cylinder assembly from the uh, last generation of car. I'm sure there's improvements. The ABS now in this car is coming as an American product. Uh, cup cars traditionally don't have ABS. Uh, this one is the new M5, where the last generation car had M4. So it is an improvement in the ABS system. I'm not a big, I, I like to not have an ABS, but but us mortal, mortal drivers, ABS can come in handy. ABS definitely <laughs> comes in handy. I was, I was at mid-Ohio in the rain, and I was leading in the 991 car, and I came over madness, and I was sliding towards the edge of the track, holding oh. onto the ABS, and right as the outer wheel was that close to the grass, and I, and I made it up there. I came, when I won the race, I came in and I thanked Motorsport. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I would have totaled the car, you know, because uh, it was like being on ice oh. and the car just drifted and hooked up and went up over the hill. And uh, yeah, so when, when you need ABS, it sure is good. When you don't, it gets in the way, but hey, that's the way it is. Well, folks, I want to thank you, Mike, for allowing us to be here. I know you've got tons of work to do. Yeah, you we got to get, get this, this loaded up. 
And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a like. Be sure to subscribe because we'll have other updates as Mike, you know, spends more time with this GT3 Cup and uh, you don't want to miss it. So we'll check you next time. Good. Thanks, Phil. Thank you.